One team I honestly felt underachieved last year was the Johnson Dragons. I was live in Marshalltown where the Dragons gave that game away to a team that would go on to the 4A state title game. Now moving forward to this year, I think the Dragons have the right mix of experience on both sides of the ball, including running back Nathan DePenning, who ran for over 1,000 yards, 12 touchdowns, Bradley Hagerla, who led the team with 86 tackles out of the end position, and kicker Spencer Lee is automatic, and he will be a valued weapon in tight games. And looking at their schedule, they'll have their fair share of tight games, with a schedule that includes a return trip to Marshalltown, Atatumla, Urbandale, Ankeny, and Dowling. But even with the schedule, I'm still very high on this team, and I predict a 7-2 regular season, but a second round exit in the playoffs. Waukee had a very solid season last year, but moving forward, the big question is what happens with Chad Owens no longer leading this team on and off the field. I mean, Chad Owens accounted for over three-fourths of their total offense, and he was the only player in 4A to not only throw for over 1,500 yards, but he also ran for over 1,500 yards. So with Chad Owens gone and a player to be determined at the quarterback position, I see Waukee transitioning into more of a power back, play action type of offense, and that will start with the return of Evan Brewer at the tailback position. The schedule opens with Ankeny, and they also have road trips to Ottumwa, Mason City, and Valley, and a home game against Fort Dodge. So considering the schedule and the lack of Chad Owens, I think Waukee takes a bit of a step back this year and finishes Five and four, and we'll have a first round exit in the playoffs. Mason City had a solid five and four season last year, but to improve on that mark, new head coach Justin Pinner will have to mold the offense into something special without star quarterback Lee Gallo. If he can, the defense returns at six leading tacklers and is good enough to keep the Mohawks in any game. While Mason City has quality opponents on the schedule, a majority of those will come at home, including games against Waukee, Urbandale, and Valley. My prediction for Mason City is a 5-4 and four season and a first round exit in the playoffs. Marshalltown had a Cinderella of a season last year, going from 3-6 and six two years ago to 13-1 and one and a 4A runner-up. But with Creekmer and company gone, it's widely expected that Marshalltown will step back into mediocrity. But this team and the community still believe strongly in players like Darius Ziegler, who's an explosive running back who Marshalltown promoted deep into the playoffs last year. And in addition, you got a guy like Mark Duncan, who I think will have a breakout season with Carlson and Timish gone, and Kyle Carnahan will be ready to step up in a leadership role on the defensive side. The schedule isn't overly difficult with a home game against Johnson in the non-conference, but trips to Mason City, Valley, and Waukee will certainly prove challenging. My prediction for Marshalltown is a 4-5 and five season and a first-round exit in the playoffs. Ames finished 3-6 last year, but they suffered through a couple fourth quarter collapses and their defense was Jekyll and Hyde from week to week. But this team is talented, and the evidence to prove it was taking Dowling to the brink in the first round of the playoffs last year. Returning quarterback Kyle Anderson is the real deal. He threw for over 1,000 yards and 13 touchdowns and only half a season of play. With Anderson and running back Corey Thompson back, if the defense can just be average from week to week, the little Cyclones will be very competitive. My prediction for Ames is a 5-4 and four season and a second round exit in the playoffs. Before last year, Urbandale was the cellar dweller of the Central Conference, but they broke out with a 7-2 and two season and they dismantled Valley in the playoffs before falling one game short of the UNI Dome. I don't think last year was a fluke, but with Javari Wetterburn and Chad Gilson gone, I do think the Jayhawks take a step back this year. But do keep an eye on all-purpose player Travis Perry, who is one of the most underrated players in all the CIML. My prediction for Urbandale is a 4-5 and five season and a first round exit in the playoffs. Atoma finished 7-2 and two last year, but I think their record was inflated based on who they played. However, this year, their non-conference schedule is so brutal, including games against Johnston, Valley, Ames, and Waukee, that I don't think they'll win any of those four. And when you consider how inexperienced this team will be, there's reason to think this season could potentially snowball on them. My prediction for Atomwa is a 4-5 and five season and a first round exit in the playoffs. The Scarlets had a great year last year, finishing 7-4, and four, but with a coaching change, their six leading tacklers, and every position player of note graduating, it's hard to pinpoint any Kiwi player coming back. I don't think East is as bad as North or Hoover, for example, but I think they'll be closer to their Des Moines brethren than the likes of an Urbandale or a Waukee. My prediction for East is a 4-5 and five season and a first round exit in the playoffs. 
It's almost shocking to think a program like Southeast Polk went 1-8 and eight last year, but what's even more shocking is that this team could be even worse without Cody Engel. If the Rams want to return to the promised land, they'll have to get back to pounding the rock, and that starts with Jake Sargent. The Rams' season opener against Lincoln will really be the measuring stick for how the rest of their season will play out. My prediction for Southeast Polk is a 3-6 and six season, and they'll sneak into the playoffs before getting bounced in the first round. Roosevelt is a bit of a sleeper in the Metro Conference this year, and with athletes like Taj Washington and Michael Smith in the backfield, a playoff berth is not completely out of the question. My prediction for the Rough Riders is a 3-6 and six season, but they'll just miss out of the playoffs. Indianola overachieved last year at 4-5, and five, but I think a lot of that had to do with Michael Chia having 40 touches a game. With no one in the backfield or in the return game to replicate what Chia did for the Indians, I predict a 2-7 regular season and the Indianola will miss out on the playoffs. It's a long shot, but with Ben Markey and Theo Evans, Hoover could potentially make the playoffs as they have a fairly soft schedule and a few winnable games. However, my prediction for the Huskies is another 1-8 season and no trip to the playoffs. The only difference between the North High football program and their mascot, the polar bear, is that the polar bear is on the endangered species list, while their football program should be. Five wins in five years, and coming off an 0-9 season, I predict more losses on the way, another 0-9 season for North. And that will do it for my preseason podcast. Be sure to check back for my week zero preview prior to the August 20th start of the season. And check out Mouth of the Midwest every weekday as Marty and John continue their CIML coaching series as the season draws near. This is Dustin Chandry for Football Friday Nights on 98.3 WOW FM.